Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Sandra Yanachak. I will be moderating our next session. In line with our theme of showcasing real world examples of micro credentials in practice, a team from Ontario Tech University is here to showcase their math and coding elementary micro credential. Joining us from Ontario Tech, we have Fiona MacArthur, the strategic project manager for the Office of the President, Diane Teplo, the director of education studies who developed the math and coding elementary micro credential alongside Ian Brody, who is also here. He's a sessional lecturer at Ontario Tech and retired grade one to eight teacher of the Toronto District School Board. We also have Tim Hans joining us, a recipient of the micro credential. And so later on in this session, I will briefly interview Tim about his experience as a learner, and then I will take questions from the audience for the whole group. But first, I will pass it over to Fiona, Diane, and Ian to provide an overview of Math and Coding Elementary. Thanks, Sandra. <clears throat> um, yeah, do you wanna just start with the second slide, Diane? So uh, we've been working on micro-credentials at Ontario Tech for about four or five years now. And so what that meant is back when we started, there was no framework. It was really the wild west and we could kind of think about things however we wanted. Um, so we wanted to develop some, some ideas around what to micro-credential and how we were going to implement micro-credentials at Ontario Tech. So we came up with this diamond. Um, it had three points that were key value criteria. So first, any micro-credentials that we did had to be representative of the university ethos. Second, they had to focus on skills that could be assessed and transferred from a learning um, opportunity. And third, and really importantly, they had to celebrate the, the earner. So we really wanted to focus on how these micro-credentials could be used by um, the people who were earning them. When we implemented them, we had four small criteria. Uh, they had to be feasible. They had to be something we could do. We had to be credible in presenting them. They had to be useful to the earners, which meant that they had to either lead to, they had to lead to an employment outcome or the next step in a pathway. And they had some wayfinding. So some sort of direction associated with them for how um, earners would move forward. Um, and so this really was sort of the genesis of how we started thinking about micro-credentials at Ontario Tech. Um, this, thanks. This meant that um, one of our first projects was uh, build, building a series of micro-credentials that really focused on transferable skills. Um, these are very, these were informed by the work done by ED Design Lab that was um, talked about earlier, but we really developed, redeveloped these micro credentials so that they were more reflective of some of the content was more reflective of the Canadian context as we were developing them. Um, what we learned while we were developing these micro credentials was that these skills related to that they could be developed in a variety of contexts. And so we've worked across our campus community to really start integrating micro credentials in a variety of different ways. The idea behind that was that micro credentials shouldn't create a barrier for learners, but they should really create opportunities for learners to articulate and surface these skills in order to make them more employable. These micro credentials are offered free of charge um, across our campus and into the community through a variety of initiatives. Um, this includes, they've been used to underpin our HR development programs. Uh, professional development programs. We're using them um, in our co-curricular activities with student life to really articulate the skills that learners are developing there. Uh, We're using them embedded within academic programming. So last year we presented at this conference um, an opportunity where a faculty member took some of these micro-credentials and made them available to their students within the academic program. Um, we're using them as part of a mental health support program called Recovery College, and we partnered with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce in order to offer these micro-credentials to a series of small and medium enterprises. Um, so this is really the background around which this project uh, started to take place. And I, Diane, I think I'm going to turn this slide over to you now. 
Do you want me to talk about this slide or just no, move to the next one? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Oops, I skipped a slide. So in this context, um, uh, Fiona had talked to the Faculty of Education about micro credentials, and we were thinking about the possibility. And then coding came into the new elementary math curriculum. This was brand new set of expectations. Most teachers had never coded before, never mind trying to teach it. Uh, Ian and I had been working in classrooms with real teachers, helping them because we suspected this was coming. We were, Ontario Tech had had a course in, course for coding for teachers for five years in its program. But we started looking at, now we had some expectations. What did teachers need to know? And we thought the micro-credential would be a great way to demonstrate what all the great things our students were doing. Uh, so Ian and I sat down with the new curriculum and it's a very substantial curriculum. I just put a few expectations here. It's okay. Okay. So continuous learning, talk to us about creating a course for teachers who are in the classroom. And Ian and I sat down with, um, looked at the curriculum and what did teachers need to know? And could we make a micro-credential out of it? So we first developed it with continuous learning, uh, with a portfolio that they could share their skills many ways, making it very accessible. And then we adapted our Coding for Teachers course, so the micro-credential existed as a possibility within that course. And uh, with the, within the continuous learning course or in our uh, course for pre-service teachers, the assignment was similar. It was portfolio and it was targeting portfolio to the micro-credential if you chose to. It has a high standard. You have to have at least an A minus uh, to get the micro-credential. But the students are getting feedback at least twice throughout the course before they do the final resubmit to, to show them where they need to grow um, to, at the end, be able to demonstrate in three areas the understanding of those coding concepts, understanding how to teach the coding, and also thinking about, because it's in the math curriculum, how the uh, coding allows to learn math. So there's lots of math embedded in coding. And if we do this well, we can uh, help students learn math through the coding. And, and both Ian and I have lots of experience from our own experience in the classroom uh, doing that. Um, in terms of the impact of the micro-credential, we're hearing informally through principals and teachers that it gives them a lot of confidence when they're hiring. Um, and Ian can talk a little bit more to that, that these students can come in. When they bring in a new teacher, when they're hiring new teachers, they want to bring in those teachers that have experience with coding and teaching coding so they can support the whole staff. And uh, looking to the future, uh, science, the new science curriculum came out on Tuesday. There is coding in the new science curriculum. So that may be our next micro-credential. Um, Ian, anything you wanted to add to that? No, not at all. Uh, I mean, other than like what, what it's like to, to offer them. Do you want me to talk to that? I think it's on the next. That's a good idea. Next slide, maybe. That's it. That's it for our slides. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the thing, thing that's really important is that it is an option for the students. So almost all of our primary junior students will try it because it's directly related to the elementary curriculum. Uh, for, for our intermediate and seniors, it's, it's relatable if they are doing it uh, with grades seven and eights. And it does give them like a little bit of an extra cachet. We have like stories of some of our former students who are now being put into positions of responsibility uh, and some very, very quickly as well. Uh, so it, it, it is making a difference uh, in, in, out, in the, out in the field, but we don't have any really empirical data about that. So the, the, the main thing about the in-class version is that it is very, very highly focused on, on, on achievement. So they have to, like all the students have to be able to, to demonstrate that they can, uh, they can code. They have to be able to demonstrate uh, critical thinking about uh, pet coding pedagogies uh, at a very high level. And, um, and we also, and, Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. So it's. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, uh, my brain's gone today. Um, Tim Tim will 
back me up on that, that I sometimes do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just so, one, oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, no, please, you. Mm -hmm. One other thing that we've been talking about is the micro-credential. Um, we think that it's upping Ontario Tech's brand as yes. that teacher education program that builds this uh, wise use of technology. So it's not just technologies for tech technology's sake, but that uh, thoughtful implementation of technology to improve learning. Uh, this is what we're hearing back from um, uh, different boards. Our students are getting our pre-service teachers when they graduate and, be and become teachers. They're quickly getting hired. And oh, one more idea there. And again, like Ian, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all of this yeah so uh the, i'm uh, looking at my notes yeah the other word i would but put the two there, micro credentials are the same yeah. and use the same in the same program yeah so the other word i would add to what um what what diane just said is responsible use of technology as well so that we're using it responsibly and properly so that it's actually a benefit for the learners and for and for the teachers at the same time yeah. so yes. that's that's part of our the ethos that we have at uh, ontario tech that we're getting lots of feedback. and what i was going to say oh yeah go well you got it is one board um has told me unofficially that everyone in their special assignment uh teachers for that are working with technology are all ontario tech grads <laughs> and very quickly, as Ian was saying, yeah. so um, that uh, it's, you know, both it's helping the students and we're thinking it's also helping the brand of the university. Uh, and, and we're and look, really, yeah, we're also really, really careful about who gets it. So there is a really, mm -hmm. it's a really high standard they have to, they have to go, go to. But they also get, as it says, Diane said, we give them feedback. If they're not at that level, we'll show them what they need to do, and it's up to them to do it. So, and Tim, Tim will be able to tell you all about what it's like to actually go through that process when we get to him. So, yeah. Sandra, that's our presentation. If you wanted to talk to Tim, and then we can take the questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Ontario Tech, for showcasing this micro credential. It's so impressive how you were able to respond to a policy change um, by creating a micro-credential to fill a knowledge gap um, that bolsters learners' skill sets and visibility. Tim, I'd like to open up the floor to you now to ask a few questions about your experience achieving this micro-credential. You were a recent graduate of Ontario Tech's Faculty of Education. You are a teacher at Durham District School Board. You're actually in the classroom right now. Um, so for starters, what led you to this micro-credential? Well, honestly, what it was, was a lack of knowledge on coding. I had no idea. I knew that I was gonna be, I, I knew that I was gonna have to teach it. And I was one of those teachers that we mentioned earlier that was kind of like, I don't know, can, can I do this? I'm not, I, I don't computer. Like if my computer starts making a noise, I throw it out. Um, so when they came to me and said like, hey, we're offering the micro credential through your coding course. Um, would, you, would, would you be interested in putting a name forth for it? I'm like, Sure, that sounds that sounds great. It's more knowledge. It's more. I, I saw it as benefiting me when it came to getting hired. Um, when it came to the jobs, um, obviously, uh, obviously that's the end goal here. And I'm currently on an LTO um, at uh, at a school in Ajax, um, where I'm teaching math. And I'm a history English teacher. I'm teaching, I'm, I'm actually doing math. And when we get back after the break, my students don't know this, but we're gonna be working with Scratch. I'm, I'm gonna teach them Scratch. Um, and uh, we're, but that, that, that's kind of what led me to it was I saw the opportunities. I saw the way the job market was kind of heading. Um, and I figured, you know, I can stand in the way of it or I can go, I can go with it and it'll increase my chances of 
being able to understand exactly what coding is. I thought it would, we all have that preconceived notion of, of coding and hacking and all, and, 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 and all that. Um, and all, all this computer stuff like, um, oh yes, we may need to explain Scratch. Um, so Scratch, um, Scratch is through MIT, um, if I remember correctly. And it's basically, it's basically a, a way to, uh, a way to um, practice coding without having to get into the nitty gritty. Um, you can put uh, little puzzle pieces, blocks together um, to create a, a line of code. And it's like, your sprite will walk 10, type in 10 steps, walks 10 steps and then turns left and then turns right. You, you can end up back. You, we, uh, Ian, we did uh, geometric art when I, when he was my, my, my instructor. Um, it's incredibly interactive. It is so, um, and it is so straightforward and so easy that, hey, if I can understand it, um, and anybody can understand it. Um, but yeah, no, back, back to why I, why I uh, was, was interested in the micro-credential. I figured I could stand in the way of progress, how things are progressing, and be put my foot down. No, I'm one of these teachers that I'm doing this, and this is the way I've always done it. Um, or I could be cutting edge. And practically speaking, that's, that's hiring. Um, practically speaking, that's jobs. But also, what other opportunities could it lead to? I mean, did I think I'd ever be speaking on a panel about coding and micro-credentials? <laughs> no. Did I ever think that I would be interviewed by the Toronto Star about micro-credentials? No, not at all. And then both of those have happened. <laughs> And I'm all of a sudden one of the spokespeople for this micro credential that I thought, yeah, that'd be kind of, that'd be good to have, wouldn't it? That'd be fun. So, Tim, we have a comment in the chat from Robert. Okay. I am really interested to hear more about any impact on Tim's students. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so, the students, I've, I, I, I had actually warned them um, by prepping them, um, not not warning like how we're doing this after, ah. um, <laughs> but it's like we're hey this is where we're headed. Um, we're going to be working with uh, Pythagorean theorem on this. We're going to be creating our triangles, figuring all this out, um, and they're grade eights, so they were as thrilled as thirteen year olds are able to show. I guess it's kind of like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, dude, you, you know what we're doing, right? And they're like, that's cool. I'm like, all right, that's cool. We're going to go ahead with it. We're going forward with this. Um, the impact on my students, um, honestly, I would love to, I would love to take you all into my classroom today. I just taught math before lunch. And to see these kids, these students, in little little groups all huddled around trying to figure stuff out and they're looking at the board they're going to the whiteboard and writing it they're trying to figure everything out it's it's like poetry in motion sometimes that sounds amazing i i feel like your students might uh, even be smarter than me pretty soon because well, i don't definitely know anything. smarter than me i, I don't know anything <laughs> about coding either so um so another question for you, now that you've earned this micro-credential, tell us a bit mm -hmm. more about how employers have received it. Well, I was actually uh, just having a conversation with my, uh, my current principal about it. Um, and I said, well, I'm doing this, this conference. And um, she said, oh, really? Is that for something you did in, in, in the faculty? I said, yeah, that micro-coding or micro-credential and coding? that um, you were excited about, it's that. And then we had like an hour long conversation about what it actually means for my students. Um, 
they were very interested to hear the non-math and science ways I can implement this. Um, I'm sure Ian will recall um, or might recall the uh, myself and two of my uh, my colleagues. We did a history um, a history code. We actually managed to code maps and the expansion and fall of the Roman Empire. Um, we were able to do that. And I was able to bring that to my employers, to my principal. And she's like, oh, because this is so brand new that everyone just, they hear coding and it's math and science, math and science, math and science. And I'm like, but what if, but what if I can do this? Um, so they're very, very eager to see me explore the, um, the arts and humanities side. Um, I'm, I'm also a professional musician. I'm able to code songs, um, even on, on scratch on something as, as straightforward as scratch. I'm able to, I'm able to, uh, to, to code basic, basic songs, um, or I can do backing tracks. Um, so I'm, I'm very, they're, they're very, very, uh, interested, um, I guess to quote pop culture, um, the first Star Wars movie, um, we will be watching your career with great interest. Um, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're really, really interested to see what I can, what I can do with that and what Ontario Tech will be able to do with that um, if they want to delve into any of the artistic side. That's amazing to hear, Tim. And it sounds like the micro credential gave you just so much more visibility and differentiated you mm -hmm. than amongst other applicants. Um, so I'm going to open up the chat. Uh, feel free to drop in any questions for this group. I've got one question um, that I thought of for myself, and I'm really fascinated about the trigger in this circumstance. So there was this change in education policy um, or this knowledge gap, and this landed on a radar somewhere at Ontario Tech and transformed into a micro-credential. So I was wondering if you guys could tell me a bit more about that process and, and what it looked like at Ontario Tech. If I, I was sort of the instigator, so I can talk to that. Fiona was working on what she showed you, the university's bigger picture. She was coming in and talking to fa faculties. Uh, I met with her with another colleague from our BA in Educational Studies, which is another program about possible micro-credentials. And then the change happened, then the curriculum changed. And it was just like, and Ian and I are talking about, you know, teachers need to learn this and they need to learn this. Having spent the last five years working both with pre-service teachers and a few teachers in the classroom who were interested in it because it wasn't in the curriculum. And, you know, we need to do this. We need to help teachers out. How can we do that? And the first thought, well, we'll do, you know, we'll up our game in our coding for teachers course. We'll create the continuous learning course for any teachers who want to take it um, because they, you know, you take, it takes time to learn how to code. It takes time to learn enough coding to teach coding. So it's not something you do in a one day workshop. You don't get the depth you're needing, you need needed. So it just sort of happened that the right person mentioned micro credential in the same time frame that we were talking about what we needed to do for pre-service teachers and teachers. And the idea was born. And then uh, if I get an idea, uh, I, uh, I run with it. But Fiona and her, her colleague at, the, at that time, Sarah Stokes, was, were working on this project. They loved it. Continuous learning loved it. And, you know, the hardest part was Ian and I trying to figure out what the assessment would look like, yeah. what an inclusive assessment would look like that gives students multiple chances to learn from feedback, because we know that's best practice in assessment, and what, what did they need to be able to do that they could learn in eight weeks or nine weeks, which was what we had for a course, um, to, to, to assess that knowledge. And the micro-credential is the result. So a lot of hard work from a lot of people after those, just those ideas sort of hit at the right time to be put together. Yeah, we, we're, we're also quite nimble in our, in our ability to, to be able to pivot 
uh, on anything technologically at our at our camp at our faculty. Um, but we're like we've been doing this already for five years before the curriculum changed. So we we kind of know where where like we we know how to how how much this the uh, teachers need to know. And so mm -hmm. it, it's. Uh, so. Ian and I were probably the uh, on the practical level of working with teachers and pre-service teachers. Ian and I were developing the courses of what yeah. teachers need to learn about coding to be able to teach coding. Yes, and that started in 2016. So that also helped our nim our nim nimbleness. That's not the word. Um, Nimbleness. I was no. going to say nimbility, but that didn't sound okay. right. But I like that word. I think I yeah. But that how that? allowed us because we had a really good understanding of what students needed. No, we were actually surprised how deep the Ontario curriculum goes into coding in grades one to eight. Uh, so that upped our game a little bit in what we were teaching. You know, before we were teaching lots of very cool, interesting things, and then we had to go a little bit deeper to make mm -hmm. sure we were covering things that were in the Ontario curriculum that we had thought might be we didn't think would be in elementary when we first when we were thinking what be in the curriculum, but it's a good curriculum. So Ian, you mentioned that there was like another policy change with science. Um, so another micro credential might be coming out. And then maybe this question is actually for Tim, but you know, would you do it again? Like, would you take another micro credential? 100%, oh, 100% I would, um, not only uh, do I believe in this concept of lifelong learning. Um, I see the practicality of it. Um, it's an area that I'm not well versed in. So it's not like I'm just kind of tooting my own horn. Um, it's something that I'm interested in. Um, and it's something that I would gladly do again. That's yeah, amazing. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go uh, ahead. And, yeah, and we are we are ready to to be able to like if if like we are ready to be able to uh, put down those things for the other subjects as well. So we had kind of had a little bit of a trial run with Tim's group. Like we said, you know, let's do a science one, let's do a, a, a digital storytelling one, and uh, let's do a, a visual arts one. So we can do all of those things. Uh, it's just a case of getting them accredited. Mm -hmm. And Fiona, when we started the math and coding, the, the procedures were they, were, they were really excited. And I'm not saying they're not excited now. They were really excited. There's now more of a process and a procedure. So now we have to go through that. And I mean, and that, um, and that's, I think that's important. We wanna make sure these credentials are meaningful, but we now have a bit more of a process to go through than the first one where we were, we dreamed it and it, it became very quickly. Yeah. Back to the Wild West days where we could do whatever we wanted, but now we have policy and procedures. So. <laughs> Another micro-credential. Well, this is all amazing to hear. And on behalf of everyone here at eCampus Ontario, thank you, Fiona, Diane, Ian, and Tim for showcasing this micro-credential, for sharing your experience. And we look forward to the future micro-credentials that come out. Um, we'll now take a quick five minute break and then we will meet everyone in the next and final session of Micro Credential Forum 2022. Thanks so much, everyone.